Hey, you know there's a Formula One race this Sunday. Isn't that a washing powder? No, no, the thing with the cars, the Grand Prix. Oh, the thing that Jake Humphreys presents. Yeah, that could be a problem. Looks like Jake Humphreys been interviewed by Kev the Bear today. Oh. Oh. Coming not quite live from BBC Television Centre, it's everyone's favourite man-eating bear, it's Kev! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, there's nothing better to eat up than the applause of an audience. <laughs> no, that's not strictly true. It's much better just to eat up your audience. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. I've been told I'm not allowed to eat too many of you today. But you, you, you and the entire front row, no need to find a way of getting home tonight, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I digress. Moving on, we have a very special guest today. He is the voice behind Formula One. It's the legend that is BBC commentator Jackie Humphreys. Yay, Jackie. Listen, Hooray. listen. Uh, My name's Jake, not Jackie. And what? why am I sitting in a cage? This is ridiculous. Uh, it's for your own protection. You see, my producer doesn't want me to eat your face until the end of the interview. But you are contractually obliged to let me eat your face at the end. <laughs> really? OK, I look forward to that. Yeah, Lovely. not my fault. Talk to your agent. Or you could. <laughs> She's in my belly! <laughs> You're welcome. She's quite grisly, I'd imagine. She was a little, a little old, a bit like mutton. Now, moving on. <laughs> moving on. Jensen Button. Mm. What do you think about him? Oh, I think he's a very good driver. He's got an amazing car this year. No, 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 I'll stop you there, Jake. I don't care if he can drive. I mean, what do you think he tastes like? <laughs> well, I've got no idea. Having said that, though, he doesn't shave a lot, so I would Ooh. imagine that, that, you know... It's, hairy. Yeah, it'll be Stubbly hairy on the goes mouth. down your throat. I like that. Reminds me when I once ate a goat. Now, Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. Is it true that he tastes like ham? <laughs> No, I don't think so. Just because his name is Hamilton, yeah. he doesn't taste like Hamilton. When you have you can't taste, just go what around, do you taste like? You can't just go around eating Formula One drivers. That is not why, on. Why not? Got, well, they're millionaires. The Surely it'd be a rule they should add in. No more pit stops, but Kev will eat you. What <laughs> happened, though, in the middle of the season when they say, oh, I'm sorry, there's no Ferrari this week because Kimi Raikkonen's been eaten by Kev the Bear? It ain't Kimi Raikkonen? Yeah. Who's he? Well, he's probably a very tasty Formula One driver. I bet he is. I yeah. can tell you've had a taste. Now, <laughs> I found this list, right? Yeah. And at the top, it said hungry. And then it says, Hamilton, 1 hour 38 minutes. Webber, 1 hour 38 minutes 40 seconds. Is that a list of how long it takes to cook them? No, it's not a list of how long it takes to cook them. It's a list of how quickly they managed to finish the race. Lewis Hamilton won the race, so his time was a little bit quicker. Um, now, last question. I've got to ask because I'm contracting obliged. To be honest, I'm a bit full, but I'll do it for you. Can I eat your face? No, you can't eat my face. Oh, come on, let me I've eat your face. I've got to present the BBC's F1 coverage. No oh, one cares. I do that without a face? No one cares, Jake. Just let me eat your face. They'll let no. that Eddie Jordan do it. Just let me eat your face. Get come away come from here. my face. You can eat David Coulthard's face. Poor, poor Jake. Uh, who's... Well, you, maybe you could present it. I don't think so. Ah, oh, but anyone else can just press the red button and listen to the CBBC commentary. Oh, I suppose so. Can we watch? Sorry, I've got no head. Yeah, I think we should. I wish I didn't have a head. This really hurts. Poor Jake. We interrupt your regular programming for another edition of Gnome Watch. I'm Jefferson Excelsior Turner, and thanks to you people out there, I look like a flower. Abbey, age 12, Basingstoke, I thank you. Let's not talk about that anymore. We now go over to our roving reporter in the field to see what the latest Gnome activity is. It's Daniel Veronica Clarkson. Can you hear me, Dan? Hickory dickory dock, Jeff. I'm in a nursery rhyme. What? I'm quite literally in a nursery rhyme, Jeff. What? What was that pop? A weasel. Look, how did you... No, OK, I don't care about how. Why, Dan? Why are you in a nursery rhyme? I had a tip from little Jack Horner, Jeff. Uh-huh, and uh, what did he say? He didn't say very much, Jeff. He just sat in the corner pulling plums out of pies with his thumb. Right, no, what, what, what was his tip? He told me that gnomes are infiltrating nursery rhymes, Jeff, so they can warp the minds of the children. Really? Sure, wh why not? Uh, uh well, uh, what, 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 what have you found out? Absolutely nothing, Jeff. Look, man, you're a reporter. Report something, interview someone. All right, um, Humpty Dumpty? What? Why Humpty Dumpty? Well, because he's just sat on the wall next to me. Um. Mr. Dumpty, do you have any comment about this gnome epidemic? Ah! 
Uh, I can confirm that Humpty Dumpty has had a great fall, Jeff. Uh, 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 oh no, what? That's dreadful news. Yeah, but it's all right, Jeff. Wait, wait. There's a lot of men and horses coming to his aid. Well, how, how many? All of them, Jeff. All of the king's horses and all of the king's men are coming to help Humpty Dumpty. Well, that is a relief. Well, not really, Jeff. The horses aren't quite medically trained. They're stamping on the egg. Yeah, I've always wondered about that. Well, that was Daniel Veronica Clarkson, compassionate as ever. It's now time to return you to your regular programming, or as regular as Chucklevision ever can be. Tastes like chicken, Jeff. <laughs> Hello. This is a message from Screaming Crayon Revival on behalf of musicians everywhere. Music piracy is a real problem. It affects everyone. It costs us money. It... Excuse me a moment. What are you guys doing? Arrgh! Yeah, no, let me guess. When I said music piracy, you heard piracy. This might be funny. Arrgh! They'd be fine words you said there, Missy. But where are you hitting the gold? What gold? Your gold discs are. I want Ooh. your discs. No, are. Oh, oh. Look, our last record did so badly, we wouldn't even get a paper disc. Never mind a gold one. That's because we didn't do a sea shanty. Oh. Chew us in, boots oh. and hacker. Oh. 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 Pirates! Pirates! No, we've got a.